This video is brought to you by SoccerPro.com, bringing you everyday low prices with no membership fees. Be sure to use coupon code SR4U at checkout to receive $10 off any order of $100 or more. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Adidas X15.1 in the white and metallic silver colorway. Now inside the box, they do include a string bag to go along with the shoes themselves. The string bag is black in color with neon yellow strings. It features neon yellow and kind of like an orange color paint splattered across the entire front. Your X logo in white in the middle and your Adidas football branding on the bottom with the back of the bag being left completely blank. Um, other than that, all you're going to find inside the box, as you guys can see, are the shoes themselves. So we'll get these guys out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at what I think is a really, really good looking colorway of the X15.1. So in today's video, we are of course going to take a closer detailed look at the colorway itself. We're gonna talk tech specs, performance features, take a look at the weight of these things, as well as talk about how they fit and feel on feet. So if you are interested in learning more about this particular colorway of the X15.1, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $220 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's take a closer look at the colorway. Now, as you guys can see, these things are a very bright white with some metallic silver and black accents. Now, one thing that people always seem to ask me whenever I feature a white shoe is, will they get dirty? And the simple answer to that question is yes. White is fairly difficult to keep clean. It shows dirt and grass tends to stain it. Because the sole plate is mostly white in color, that plastic that plastic's gonna get stained pretty easily. But as far as the upper is concerned, there isn't actually a lot of stitching on the upper, which is normally what stains permanently on a white shoe. So if you do keep up with cleaning the upper, it should remain white uh, fairly well. You may get a little bit of staining here around the edge of the sole plate, which is perfectly normal. Um, but like I said, if you're looking to keep your shoes nice and bright white, probably save these for only really, really nice days. The laces get stained and this collar actually, because it's also white in color, will get stained pretty easily too. As far as the actual appearance of the shoe new out of the box is concerned though, they look absolutely fantastic. This is in my opinion, or at least my personal favorite colorway of the X15.1. Just really, really like how they look. You have the white on the upper, and because all the X15.1s have this kind of fake carbon fiber graphic on there, um, it has a combination of white and metallic silver, which just looks really, really clean to me. You have the white overlay in the chaos graphic on the lateral and medial side. The metallic silver, which is actually reflective. Um, there's a really good video showing off the reflectiveness of the actual, um, uh, elements themselves on my Instagram page, which you can find linked down below in the description of this video. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I post a lot of stuff there um, in, in terms of what gets featured on the channel. So go ahead and check that out if you just wanna see the reflectiveness of this shoe in action. And then of course you do have the white and black paint speckling on top of that reflective material, which looks really cool too. You have a silver Adidas logo on the tongue along with your X branding in black. And then on the very back of the shoe, you can see that you have a big, large Adidas logo in a shiny black color. So that's pretty much it in terms of the colorway itself. I really like how they look. Let me know your thoughts on them down below in the comment section. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the tech specs so we can learn a little bit more about the overall performance. As far as performance is concerned, the X15.1 is a very good shoe, but it isn't without its flaws. And we'll get into that in just a second. I know a lot of you guys will probably ask now that it's been a couple of weeks, which is my personal favorite between the standard X15.1 and the new X15 Plus Prime Knit variation. And honestly, after having time to kind of wear the two side by side, I will say that I do prefer the Prime Knit model, but that's not to say that that one's really good and this one's really bad. They're just different in terms of what they have to offer. If you want the thinner, more barefoot sensation, this version of the X15.1 is the one to get. Whereas if you want something that's still thin but has more of a padded feel on the ball, that's kind of what the Prime Knit has on offer. Not to mention that the whole fit in the heel as well as the tech fit collar system is entirely different between both of those two shoes. So while they're technically the same model, they actually fit, feel, and perform 
pretty differently from each other. So they're kind of two separate shoes. I really do feel like the Prime Knit variation better utilizes the elements that have been incorporated in this X design. But again, it's really down to personal preference and really what you're looking for from your uh, Adidas X shoes um, on whether or not you should go for the standard version or pay the little bit extra or the a lot extra, I should say, for the Prime Knit variation. Um, in terms of what you're getting here with the standard model, um, you get an X skin synthetic upper, which is very thin, provides a barefoot feel, but the liner does have a slight padded sensation to it. So it's thin, but it does have that little bit of padding just to take the edge off. Uh, but again, for the most part, if you want that true kind of one-to-one -one sensation, you definitely get that here. And it's a nice uniform synthetic across the entire foot. So no changing of thicknesses in the material, very consistent in terms of the touch on the ball that this shoe provides. Now across the entire upper, aside from where the Chaos graphic is um, positioned, you're gonna notice that there are very small little grip dots uh, that you can feel to the touch. They're not quite as noticeable on the ball, but they're non-stop grip dots. That's what Adidas calls them. And it's essentially their variation of Nike's ACC technology. It's supposed to allow for better grip on the ball in all types of playing conditions, mainly wet weather. Um, and in all honesty, they do their job to a certain extent, but it's not a make or break feature in terms of what your experience is gonna be with this particular shoe. They work well in dry weather. They work well in wet weather playing conditions as well. Um, as far as the rest of the upper is concerned, you're gonna find this chaos graphic that is fairly controversial in terms of overall appearance, but it does serve a purpose as well. It's an extra layer of firmer material that doesn't really have any stretch to it because the standard X skin is actually pretty soft and flexible despite being very thin. You can see it runs through the lateral and medial side of the midfoot from the base of the sole into the lacing system and then around the edge of the toe and forefoot area as well. It really does a good job of stiffening those areas of the upper and just creating a nice locked in sensation when you pull the laces tight. As thin and soft and flexible as the upper actually is, when you are making those quick cuts and change of direction, there's very little movement in the upper, no rollover, and you just get a nice responsive feel, which is kind of what you're looking for from this style of a soccer shoe. The laces run through the middle, as you guys can see, it does feature an actual tongue. And then of course, at the heel, this is where things get a little bit interesting. There's an internal plastic heel counter, then there's this collar system. This is what they call the TechFit collar. It looks fairly unusual. A lot of people compare it to the mid-cut models from Nike. It's nothing like that at all. And it really doesn't feel unusual on your foot. It's cut just like a standard soccer shoe would be. It just has this very slight extension piece that honestly isn't all that tight and you don't feel whatsoever when you put the shoe on. The thing that you will notice when putting them on is that the actual collar itself does continue around the kind of top of the foot right here where the X logo is positioned, but doesn't extend past it. Um, so it's kind of a minor thing. It just wraps the, the, the top of your foot and it does feel pretty good. It gives you more of a kind of one-to-one -one connection with the shoe at the heel area. But the problem that I have with the collar is not that it's elasticated, but it's the actual kind of texturing of the material because that material continues into the heel liner and it's not uncomfortable. Um, it doesn't really cause any blisters or anything like that, but it is a little bit slick against your sock. So you will find, depending on how well this shoe fits your foot, that you may run into some very minor heel slippage issues, especially if you don't tie your laces tight enough. So that's something that will bother some people with uh, the X15.1. It's something that I struggled with a little bit. Um, is it a deal breaker? Not necessarily, but I really wish they would have gone with uh, a synthetic leather liner or some kind of a uh, more abrasive type of material rather than this super slick um, kind of, I don't even know what you call this, like elasticated nylon or something like that, a neoprene almost, um, is, which is what you have here on the inside of the liner. Um, again, not uncomfortable, but you will notice that your heel does move ever so slightly, which can be a little bit annoying depending on what your tolerance is for that type of thing. As far as the insole is concerned, it's fully removable as you would expect. It features a synthetic suede liner on top, it's made from a single layer of this black foam. Nothing too fancy. It's kind of a standard Adidas insole at this point. It's what they've been using on all their models for a couple of years now. So it gets the job done. Nothing really to talk about there. And then of course you do have the, uh, the sole plate, um, which looks to have these cutouts, but there's actually a plastic plate underneath that. Then you have a stud plate on top, which is obviously what has all of the studs. So it's technically two layers of plastic, which makes it pretty rigid through the forefoot, um, pretty much through the entire foot, I should say, um, out of the box. Not to the point where it feels overly stiff, but it does take a little bit of getting used to and just requires some break-in time to feel as comfortable as they're going to be 
um, once they're actually broken in, if that makes any sense. So uh, a little bit of stiffness from the sole plate, that's not a bad thing. The shoe has a nice solid feel on foot, uh, despite having a very thin upper, which is actually an element that I really like about the X15.1. And probably the biggest change coming from the F50 line, because a lot of people obviously do compare the X to the F50s. And like I said, these feel a lot more solid and obviously aren't as lightweight either, but we'll get into that in just a second. As far as the stud pattern is concerned, this is what they call their X-Claw system. And what's interesting about all the new Adidas models is that they're now technically FGAG. So you can use this on firm natural grass as well as artificial grass. Now the stud pattern itself is loosely what we have seen in the past from the F50 line the 2014 as well as the 2015 models with of course some changes being made. It's all bladed studs, they have kind of a little bit of a V shape to them and uh, it's definitely more of a firm ground stud pattern than an AG stud pattern. Um, really, I don't know why they're even calling this an AG stud pattern. They're saying you can use it on AG, so I can't recommend against that, but I can tell you that this feels like you're using a firm ground stud pattern on artificial grass. It doesn't have the sensation of an artificial grass stud pattern, kind of like what you get from the Ace line from Adidas, which truly does have what feels like an FGAG hybrid type of uh, stud pattern in terms of how it feels and performs. This is suited for both of those plane surfaces, but I would say it is better suited for firm natural grass. So just keep that in mind. But again, if you do play on both firm natural grass as well as artificial grass, and you only wanna buy one pair of shoes, all the new Adidas models are FGAG, so they'll get the job done and should last on both of those types of playing surfaces. In terms of weight, the X15.1 is a light shoe, but it isn't what you would consider to be super light, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time so we can see exactly what they weigh uh, using this scale, of course. Keep in mind, this is a brand new pair in a size nine US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 8.2 ounces, the equivalent of 232 grams. So again, a lot of people compare the X line as kind of the replacement to the F50 line. And the F50 line did get heavier and heavier kind of from when it started in 2010 to where it ended in 2015. Um, uh, the last one being about 7.2 ounces in a nine US, but this is a full ounce heavier than those even. So again, they're gonna feel relatively lightweight on your feet, certainly not heavy, but they're not gonna have that same weightless sensation that you used to get from the earlier models of the F50 line. So if that's kind of what you're comparing it to, these are gonna feel quite a bit different, um, which again, is not a bad thing, but uh, something to take into consideration if you are looking for that ultra lightweight feel because this just does not provide that. All right, so here is a look at the X15.1s on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock white laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of gray camo SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they're pretty comfortable from right out of the box. Being that it is a thin synthetic shoe, it does have a tighter fit, which is kind of what you might expect. Um, it fits really snug through the forefoot toe box and midfoot area, but not uncomfortably tight. It doesn't feel restrictive in any way at all. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, the X skin upper is surprisingly soft and flexible for being as thin as it is. The only issue I have regarding the fit of this shoe comes in the heel area. I like how the TechFit collar wraps the top of your foot there. Feels really, really nice. But the heel liner, like I said, is just a little bit too slick for my liking. You're gonna find that even if you tie the shoes really, really tight, there's just a very slight amount of heel lift every time you lift your foot or lift your heels, I should say. Um, and it's not something, again, that's detrimental to the performance of the shoe. Um, it doesn't cause any discomfort or rubbing or blistering or anything like that just because of how soft that material actually is. But it is something that you'll notice and it never seems to really go away. Can you help this with something like True Socks or something like that? Yes, um, and that can for some people completely eliminate it, but uh, it's just something that you have to keep in mind if you don't have the opportunity to try these on prior to purchasing them is you may have some issues 
with heel slippage depending on how well these shoes fit your foot. So just keep that in mind. Again, it's not detrimental to the performance of the shoe, but it is a characteristic, a common characteristic, I should say, that people do have with the X15.1. As far as width is concerned, um, the midfoot area is not gonna stretch because it is well reinforced by this X cage. So the way these shoes fit from right out of the box is the way they're gonna fit for their entire lifespan. They'll fit most people. Um, they're wider than shoes like a Nike Mercurial Vapor 10 or something like that, but it certainly isn't exceptionally wide. So if you have really wide feet, probably not the best option for you. In regards to sizing, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right, guys, that is it for my review of the white and metallic silver Adidas X15.1. Again, if you're interested in more info on this shoe, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes that allow you to pick these up below their normal $220 retail price, as well as high quality images that I took myself that give you a better idea as to how these actually do look in person. If you have any questions at all regarding the X15.1, leave them down below in the comment section. I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.